following closely on our lesson from on uh, with calculus and instantaneous velocity and functions and that sort of thing. Now we've got we're going to look at acceleration, all right? And very basically, the velocity is the derivative of the um, position, and then the acceleration is the derivative of velocity, right? It's the same relationship from position to velocity as velocity to acceleration. And so our first equation that you're filling in is the idea of average acceleration. Okay. It looks like this. Average acceleration is delta v over delta t. All right? Good. That's that should be simple. That you should you should already know. Um, the idea though with delta v and delta t, average acceleration is the first derivative of velocity, right? So that's what we're filling in. Instantaneous acceleration is the rate of change, time rate of change of velocity. Instantaneous acceleration is the first derivative of velocity with respect to time, and it's what we call the uh, second derivative of displacement with respect to time. So it looks like this. The acceleration is the is dv dt, right? And what is v though? V is dx dt. So we're taking the derivative of this derivative. If I'm given a position function, then I can find the acceleration function. Another way of writing this is d squared x over dt squared. And again, this is an introduction to the um, the notation. There are other notations that you'll see in calculus and that we'll use in here. But for now, this is this is it. So the second derivative, all that means is that you're taking the derivative of something, and then you're taking the derivative again right, with respect to time. Uh, some generalities. The order of v of t is always one less than the order of x of t. So if x of t is, you know, t to the fourth power, then v is going to be t to the third power, right? And then the order of a of t is always one less than that of v of t, right? So if v of t is t to the third power, then a, as a function of time, is going to be t uh, squared. So you can predict if the acceleration is constant, if the order of x of t is 1, 2, 2, 1, or 0, right? In other words, the coefficient of the t squared term, um, right? Okay, so let's let's get into some examples so you can see what we're what we're dealing with here. This is where the rubber meets the road when we work through the examples. All right, so we're given this function x of t is two thirds t cubed minus three t squared minus eight t plus one. So we're going to try to find these things without uh, without a calculator. We'll do the best we can. So part A, what is the general expression for V of T? This should look familiar, by the way, from the other lessons. This is going to be 2T squared minus 6T minus 8. A of T, then, is going to be, this will be 4T minus 6. And that's it. Notice, by the way, the acceleration is changing. Now we're dealing with a situation where we have a changing acceleration. right? And then X of T... This is t to the third, right? This is order to the third. V of t, order squared. And A of t is a linear uh, idea here. Okay, so then um, C is the particle moving with constant acceleration. Um, the answer is no. Right. So like we said, this is not a constant acceleration. This is a changing acceleration. In other words, when you look at the graph of this, right, 4t minus 6, um, the value of the acceleration is not constant. So then part D, we want to know when do the velocity and acceleration of the particle have the same sign. All right, so to do this, we're going we're gonna to graph this. So the uh, acceleration, or the, the velocity, versus time graph. All right. If I want to find when the velocity, of you know, I set this equal to zero, if I set it equal to zero, I get um, negative one and four. That's from that's from before, right? So it looks like this, and it make it makes a zero here at three over two. The acceleration versus time graph looks like this: two, uh, two, four, six. So this is six. Sorry, this is four. Um, 
to, so this is one and two. Um, so if I set this equal to zero, right, then I'm going to get, this is at zero. You know, well, I can also just look at the slope, it would be, um, slope is four, so it goes up four. So this is me reaching zero at three halves. Right, a lot of ways to, to look at this. Notice, by the way, this point is where the acceleration is zero. Right, the low point, right, the minimum, is where the, the, accel the slope is zero, so that's where it reaches zero. So where do they have the same sign? Well, from zero um, time, so when the time is greater than zero but less than three halves, they have the same sign, right? They're both negative. But then this goes positive, and this is still negative. And then also when t is greater than 4, they both have the same, uh, the same signs. Right. So that's example 1. OK. Before we do example 2, something I want to point out, um, and I'll tell you now, this is the place for me where physics was awesome. I saw the beauty of physics in a way that I um, just floored me. And this wasn't pointed out to me. I was in calculus class at the time, and I was looking at the equations in physics, and noticed something. Okay, what is our general expression in VIFTAD for position? Right? It is x of t equals x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. What is the derivative of this with respect to time? Again, so the idea with the derivative here is just that we are taking, uh, you know, bringing the exponent down and then subtracting one from the exponent, and then a constant would be zero. So v of t, which is dx dt, is going to give me this. So the derivative of this is zero. The derivative of this is v naught. And then here, the derivative of this, bring the 2 down, 2 times 1 half is 1, at, and then I subtract 1. So v naught plus at. That is your general expression for velocity. That's where that comes from. And then if I have a of t, that's the derivative of the velocity equation with respect to time, the velocity function. Well, the derivative of this, that's a constant. And then this, the derivative of that is just a. And so I get the truism here, if I have constant acceleration, that the acceleration with respect to time is just a. Right? And so we get these equations all coming out of this one. This is all the same equation, just taking the derivative of it. And I get the other general kinematics equations. Mind-blowing. Awesome stuff. OK, so here's, here's an example. Now we've got 9.8 and all that kind of thing. Um, so imagine we've got some function, y of t. Hmm, y, that's like vertical, right? equals negative 4.9 t squared. It looks like half of g, right? One half g t squared. So right, that's the hint. We're talking about something here that's in free fall. Plus 8t. That would be the v naught. So we're talking about something having an initial velocity of 8. And then plus 30.625 30 meters. Right, this whole thing is in meters. And so what is this? That would be our initial position. So it's starting at a height of 30.625, has an initial velocity of positive 8, and it has an acceleration of nine, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. We can get all of that from this when we know what the equation is about. Okay, so find the general expression for v of t. So v of t is negative 9.8 t plus 8. And then the general expression for a of t like we just looked at, would just be negative 9.8. Okay, C. Is the particle moving with constant acceleration? Justify your answer. The answer to C, yes. How do we know? That's why. Because the uh, acceleration function is just a constant number. Okay, so where is the particle at t equals 0? Well, we plug 0 into, in for this. If you plug 0 in for t, that goes away, that goes away. It's at 30.625 meters. So it's starting at a, at a certain height, right? Let's draw the graph of this, just so we can see. Here's the position graph. 
It's starting off here at 30.625 meters, and it's given an initial upward velocity. All right, so it's going to look like this. See, so here's y and t. The vertical position with respect to time. We're talking about something that was thrown up into the air. Um, v of t is going to look like this. It starts off at 8 and then goes down over time. Uh, and actually, this is going to end up going negative and be negative for longer than it was over here. Uh, so I'm off, off the board, off the chart, as they might say. And then, um, so where is the particle at time zero? We did that. When is the particle on the ground? Um, so we're looking at where does this end, right, with respect to this time. There are a couple ways to do this. You can set this equal to zero. Uh, this one we're just going to do, so example two, question E, we're just going to use the calculator for this. And what we're doing is uh, we're saying y at some later time, right, so here's our equation, negative 4.9 t squared plus 8t minus 30.625, or plus 30.65. What we're doing is we're setting this equal to zero. All right, zero equals negative 4.9t squared plus 8t plus 30.625. And we're looking for the place, we set the time, set this thing equal to zero. And um, it comes out to about, t ends up, the solution is about 3.4 seconds. 3.3, 3.4 seconds. And that's what uh, we get. Um, at the end, uh, the other answer we get is a negative, and so that's our solution. That's how long it's in the air. Okay, and for question F, the average velocity, V, is delta X over T. And what is delta X? Well, it's negative 30.625, because that's how far it fell, divided by a time of about 3.3 or 3.4 seconds. If you use 3.3, then you get about uh, about negative 10 or so, doing some rounding. Okay, and rounding is okay. Rounding is actually probably better than you think. So here's some some generalities. Or first of all, so when when do we use VIFTAD? When because this equate this thing, you know, we don't necessarily need to use. Uh, calculus, if we understand all the parts of the equation and what everything means. So when do we have to use calculus? When can we use VIFTAD? We use VIFTAD, regular algebra, when the acceleration is constant. However, if the acceleration is not constant, we can't use our regular VIFTAD equations. Okay, that's, that's the, the rule. Um, the constant acceleration formulas, the VIFTAD equations are there in this table from the book. Um, and so, let's see, some other sort of generalities, things to know. When acceleration and velocity have opposite directions, then uh, the thing is slowing down. We call this deceleration. Um, we could call it, you know, slowing down. The terms are not too technical, but um, the idea is simply that the magnitude of the velocity is decreasing if acceleration and velocity have different um, signs. If they have the same sign, then the magnitude of the velocity is increasing. So keep in mind. Um, in, a, uh, in an elevator, some general questions. If a person in an elevator is in free fall, the answer is no. Not in, not in free fall. So why or why not? Because the acceleration is not 9.8 meters per second squared downward. If the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared downward, then they're in free fall, on Earth at least. Is the acceleration of a pendulum constant as it oscillates? So think of a pendulum going back and forth the answer is no. It's not accelerating uh, constantly in, in any direction, right? Down or sideways, any of those things. Okay. So uh, some other generalities for applying the kinematics equations. Um, when you're starting a problem, you set the positive and negative directions. And it's kind of arbitrary. In general, if you're going to use up as positive and down as negative, which is the standard, right is positive, left is negative. That's the, that's the normal convention. If you're going to do that, you don't have to specify, typically. 
but if you are going to do something different, like for some reason you want to make up negative and down positive, that you have to specify. Show a little diagram in your problem specifying what direction is positive and negative and that sort of thing. Look for wording in the question. There are little clues. There are some words we're going to see, like things in quotation marks, um, that mean certain things. Um, so, in other words, take, take hints about certain things. Um, take note if motion of two objects is interrelated. Sometimes we have two things that are moving and you've got to find when they meet or something like that. Like there's a problem in the uh, summer assignment like that. Well, you can calculate the velocity of one with respect to the other. You can pick whatever reference frame you want, and some are easier than others. Okay. Um, freely falling motion, that's 2.9. This, this should be very, very familiar to you. Uh, we neglect air resistance. We will take air resistance into account, but not yet. We're going to save that for later, because uh, we need some calculus to deal with that. Um, if an object is thrown straight up in the air, it's still in free fall, even though it's moving up for a little while. And the velocity at the highest point is zero. The acceleration at the highest point is negative 9.8. That's a common, tricky question, so look out for that sort of thing. And that's it for this lesson.